To my mind, a great collection is one which brings together a group of wonderful works of art into a conversation, and that very conversation enriches our appreciation of them. There are a number of themes that one sees in this group of works of art. These are images which are full of light, they're full of color. They're images that make you happy. These are two masterpieces by two of the greatest colorists in modern art, Pierre Bonnard and Gerhard Richter, two artists that it's very unusual to see hanging together. More than any other subject, Pierre Bonnard made the bather his own. This is one of the very finest examples he painted in the 1920s, and he approaches Mart, his great muse here, with almost a spiritual reverence. She's completely absorbed and unaware of us, and parts of the picture are almost abstract. If you look at the back here, it's almost as if there are mini Rothkos painted in the background. It's a very sophisticated and poetic image. 60 years later, and just over the other side of the line between abstraction and figurations, comes Gerhard Richter's abstractus build from 1986. This marks the exact moment where Richter gives up the last vestiges of structure and form in this series of abstract works. Another key theme of the collection is a real celebration of paint itself. Irvin loved pictures with a richly worked surface like this Gerhard Richter, where we can see how the squeegee and the brush draw backwards and forwards across the surface, revealing and hiding at the same time. I've been going to Dallas for a number of years, and I met Irvin early on. He was the nicest man in Dallas. He was the warmest, most engaging individual, and he loved his pictures. He was a proper collector. In fact, if you'd called him a collector to his face, he would have laughed at you. For him, these were pictures that he just brought together intuitively and that he wanted to be the backdrop for him and his family's life. Irvin began collecting with his first wife, Merle, in the 1970s and continued later with his second wife, Joan. Irvin was really a leader in business where he and his brothers transformed NCH, the family business, into a global enterprise. He was also a great leader in philanthropy, one of the huge supporters of the cultural life of Dallas, and the Dallas Museum of Arts in particular, where he was a member of the board from the late 70s onwards. If we look at this luminescent painting from 1887 by Paul Gauguin, we can see an artist at the crossroads. Martinique is critical as a bridge both stylistically and emotionally between pont and his later work in Tahiti. It represents Gauguin's attempt to flee the modern and the urban in search of a more authentic self. And in this painting, we can see both the influence of Impressionism, but also a palette and a stylized approach which looks forward to his later symbolist works. A whole century separates Gauguin and Martinique from this late masterpiece by Joan Mitchell, but both are about an emotional, inspired response to the landscape. Like Gauguin, Joan Mitchell was inspired by the light-filled canvases of Impressionism, and in particular by the world of Claude Monet. And in fact, she moved in 1968 to Vetoy to live and paint in exactly the same surroundings that had inspired him a century earlier. Irvin loved France and went every year to stay in the Ritz Hotel in Paris and then on to the Hôtel du Cap in the south of France. What better picture to celebrate that love of France than this extraordinary painting by Gustave Caillebot, who painted some of the very finest views of Paris. This major example has a truly stunning pedigree. This is one of the works which Caillebot entered for the fourth Impressionist Group exhibition in 1879, and it's been included in every major Caillebot retrospective exhibition since then. This is classic Caillebot, a vertiginous, plunging view down on the street below from the sixth floor of an apartment on the Rue à Lévis. Kaibot's playing with space. He's using the influence of photography to create this radical vantage point to look down on the flaneur parading through the streets in the ultimate fashionable modern city. We've called the Levy Collection Lumiere because when I think of these pictures, I always imagine them in this beautiful home flooded with gorgeous sunlight. Irvin was a warm and generous and engaging man, and the pictures that he brought together and the dialogue between them, I think reflects that incredibly well.